All right, folks, welcome to another CCBR live stream. Holy cow, looking at those two pictures introducing Cam Cote and Michael Roy, it made me realize just how long this pandemic lockdown has been. Um, I always wanted wings as a child. It was one of those cool skater things that all the cool kids had. Um, who knew that I would have to be 30 years old before I ever got my wings? Uh, <laughs> welcome, Michael. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well, Cam. How are you? I am doing great. Um, I'm looking forward to this. An update on CCBR's pro-life study series. We've had about 50 people do it already, and we're giving a bit of an update so that even more people can sign up for it. Um, so a little bit of background on this study series. About a year ago, we realized that there was such a high demand for our world-class speakers, people like Micah Rosendahl, Jonathan Van Maren, Deborah Gilman, um, just to name a few of them, that we decided that we had to make these speakers more accessible. And so my colleague, Rachel, um, decided to, to dedicate a ton of time towards developing a top-notch study series that churches, pro-life groups, individuals, whomever they wanted to be, could take on and um, lead within their community, uh, five-part videos with small groups to follow up. And Michael, you, um, you're working in Vancouver. You actually um, launched this video series, right? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about um, what it's like leading a study series and a little bit about the inside look of the study series? Yeah, um, so the way I ran the series, um, I ran it in a couple churches in Vancouver um, in person. So the way it worked is, um, yeah, we got in touch with these um, two churches. They were excited to get the series there and um, we advertised for about a month in advance and got a good selection of about uh 15 to 25 people at each parish and um yeah we it was a five session it's a five session series so we had one session per week for five weeks uh each day with a different topic um regarding uh the pro-life movement regarding abortion and uh it was such a good time i did it with um a few other interns who were in bc at the time and we all had a great time um I found that a lot of the people, just about everybody who participated had good things to say about it. They felt more equipped to talk about abortion with people um, and they had a good understanding of how things got to the point to where they are right now with the history of abortion in Canada. Um, and they learned um, what are some ways that the pro-life movement actually can succeed, that there actually uh, surprisingly is hope for uh, abortion laws to change and for abortion to become unthinkable in Canada. So. Um, yeah, and it was one thing I really liked about it particularly was the mock dialogue parts we did where we would um, practice having conversations. Um, oftentimes I would be the pro-choicer and they would be the pro-lifers and they'd count on me to try and change my mind. Uh, and it was a lot of fun and I think people really gained a lot from it. Um, that's, awesome. Yeah. that's awesome, Michael. I, that, that was the, the entire goal of developing this study series, to put the tools people needed to have compelling conversations um, together with the inspiration and the motivation they needed to get out on the street, um, to have conversations with their families, with their friends, um, with complete strangers joining CCBR teams for activism across the country. And, and that's awesome that, that people <laughs> were able to, to really benefit from it. Um, and and we're, we're doing something a little bit different now, right? Like generally speaking, we try to launch this program with hard copy booklets and whatnot in whether it's churches or community groups and whatnot, we're doing it online right now. And, and that's kind of cool. You're leading an online study series right now with, with a small handful of people. How's that going? That's going good as well. It's definitely a different experience than the in-person, um, but it's, it's really enjoyable as well. I'm with um, a few people from all across Canada, all of whom are passionate pro-lifers wanting to uh, learn how to become better pro-life ambassadors. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a learning curve, but um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, we actually currently, um, as I'm currently a community support intern with CCBR, and one of our goals as part of this internship is to get a total of 1,000 people taking part in the series. So pretty huge goal, um, and we're, we're a bit far off yet, which is why we're really pushing this series and wanting to get it into uh, the hands of as many people as possible. We really think this is something that, regardless of your past pro-life experience, that you can benefit from. Um, it's a good, really good foundational 
resource for people of um, all backgrounds, um, people who have had no pro-life experience or a lot of pro-life experience. Um, and it's just a really enjoyable and good way to spend uh, this pandemic. Exactly. I, I think it's so key that we're taking this time to prepare ourselves for conversations. Obviously, abortions are still being performed. And with the uncertainty and, and financial strain that we're anticipating to continue um, long after the lockdown is over, I think it's absolutely essential that um, pro-lifers are equipped with the tools that they need to engage effectively in conversation. And so I, I thought that we'd do some kind of fun here um, on this stream. I, I know that there's been lots of CPR streams already, and I, I don't know. Some of my colleagues are not sports people, but I'm a sports person. And Michael, you're a sports person too, right? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Bingo. And so I, I love competitions. I, I love sporting competitions. I'm out playing badminton every week. I play baseball. I play soccer. All that kind of stuff. Um, and. And I, I kind of miss a lot of that competition and whatnot. I, I played my wife in Scrabble a ton of times and we're getting kind of tired of Scrabble. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun if you and I had a bit of a competition. You game? Sure, let's do it, Cam. Boom. Cool, so how this competition is gonna work, Michael and I are gonna go back and forth, listing off reasons why you should do CCBR's online study series. Rules of the game, you've got five seconds to come up after I finish my um my reason you got five seconds i got five seconds after yours we're going to keep going rapid fire until somebody cannot think of another reason why somebody should do this study series oh boy uh, All right. are, <laughs> on the line right now is eternal glory and um bragging rights and all that sort of thing i i promise i won't engage in too much smack talk through this um but yeah, I think that there's a ton of reasons why people should be doing this study series. And we're not going to re repeat any of them. And so if you take the words out of my mouth, I got to come up with another reason. Um, but how do you feel about starting us off, Michael? What is the first reason why somebody should do this study series? The first and most obvious reason is to get trained in pro-life apologetics to have good conversations. Love it. I'm going to go even more specific than that. Many of you have seen Micah Rosendahl, Jonathan Van Maren, Justina Van Manen, and Devor Gilman um, on our website. Maybe you've even attended a presentation from her. Maybe you haven't. This is a time to hear that top training from top CCBR speakers. These are uh, the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. Um, these people are absolute rock stars. True, true. Uh, another reason for me would be uh, you get to meet pro-lifers from all across Canada, sometimes even across uh, the world if we have people internationally joining. So um, that's super cool. Boom. Love it. And, and so I'm going to build on that. And so a big part of this study series is the small group discussion and that you are going to not only be able to voice the, the, the challenges that you've encountered, maybe, maybe questions or, or issues that your friends and family members have um, brought up, but you're going to be able to hear those experiences from other people and sharpen your own skills based on your experience and other people's experience. Cool. Yeah. Another reason would be that it's actually at a very reduced price right now. Usually it'll cost you about $30 to take part in a church, but right now you can take it online for just $10. Boom. Love it. On top of that, when you're doing it in your church, our facilitator's guide is so thorough that anybody can lead this study series. But this is another perk of it being online. We are able to do it with CCBR staff and interns being the ones who lead your small group. And so you don't have to have any of the added pressure of having the answers ready for your participants. You're able to um, defer that to somebody like Michael, somebody like our other community support interns or one of our staff members. Yeah, true. Um, another thing is a lot of you, I'm sure, during this pandemic are probably uh, spending some time binging Netflix right now. I know I've got a few series on my watch list, um, but this is a really great opportunity um, to take a little break. Um, it's As much as I love it, it's nice to have a bit of a, a break from watching uh, watching the, uh, these series. I think it's really good to do something that you can actually apply in real life uh, and that will you know save lives. Love it. Yeah, definitely a good reason. Um, next reason that I got, I think that um, an, another super value, oh my goodness, I'm stalling right now. Um, another reason, like Michael said, you get to meet people from across the country, and one of those people could be your soulmate. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee, 
that you're going to meet your soulmate while you're doing this study series, but you very well could meet your soulmate. Like-minded people in a safe environment, sharing about common experience. Um, you, you can meet your soulmate doing this study series with these people. I think that's a bit of a stretch, Cam. I'm, I'm kidding, though. <laughs> um, but my next reason, I think, is that not only will you learn how to have good conversations, but you'll learn how to avoid having bad ones. There's a lot of terrible pro-life arguments um, that just aren't effective. And you'll learn uh, which ones are good, which ones are bad, and how to you know, distinguish between the two. Love it. And you're not going to have to memorize everything. Because we have and a very, very thorough, very excellent, well put together participants guide of um, questions and thoughts and summaries of the video series. And so you don't have to remember everything. You don't have to jot it down furiously on a notepaper notepad. You can um, rely on the incredible content that's been put together in the participants guide um, and refer back to it time and time again. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, you don't have to do it on your own. You might be a little intimidated by the fact that you're joining an online series with people from across the world. You might not know anyone, um, but you can get anyone to take part. If with your family in the house, you can get them to all um, stand in front of the uh, computer screen and watch with you. You can invite your friends. You can invite your church community and um, have them take part if, if you're interested. Um, right now we're offering, um, if churches want to, they can, um, as a church community, uh, dedicate uh, a time slot just for them so that they can all take the series together um, as a community. Love it. That flexibility is certainly key. And that's something that we're able to offer now that um, in the study series link that has been posted, um, you'll see that there are a tremendous number of options, whether you're an early riser or a night owl, whether you want to um, crash through this entire program in one week or spread it over five weeks, we have flexibility. We have different um, hosts and facilitators who are able to um, uh, leave the series whenever it's available for you. There's no excuse. There's no, oh, it's not being offered at my time. If you are waking up at six o'clock in the morning, if you are going to bed at 10 o'clock at night, there is um, a session available for you. Sweet. Uh, one other thing I can think of is that it's not just, you know, one other kind of nice pro-life thing amongst many that you can do and sort of Pat yourself on the back, feel good about, but it doesn't actually really do anything effective. This is something that you'll come out of it as a more effective pro-life ambassador, and you'll come out of it with a, a range of opportunities to get more involved in the pro-life movement, a range of opportunities to actually make a serious, tangible difference in making abortion unthinkable. Yeah, and I think that um, one of those ways is, especially for a church or for a community group, maybe you're not ready to commit to having your entire group go through this. Maybe you want to explore it a little bit. You can have delegates do this, and after the series, they're going to be able to get trained by CCPR staff to become facilitators um, who have the confidence and expertise who can lead this series um, afterwards. I can see Michael shuddering because he's out of options here. Um, I got a long list um, in my head. But this will prepare you to be able to host the study series in your own community after the COVID lockdown is done and you can have people congregating in your church or your community group all over again. Okay, cool. I guess another thing, you're right, I my written list is run out, so I'm thinking off the top of my head now. But um, one other thing is, I'm not sure if this has been mentioned before, but um, in case it wasn't obvious already, you can take it from the comfort of your home. Usually you have to go to a church, to a rec center or something to take part. Right now, uh, you can just do it from home, like Cam said earlier, on your own time. Um, but yeah, having that sort of uh, comfort and flexibility, I think, is an opportunity that you uh, can't pass up. Exactly. And, and I think another reason, another value of the small groups is that you get to practice the conversation skills in a um, very concrete way that it's not just learning, it's not just a static professor-student relationship that you're able to do. There's actually in sessions three and four, mock dialogue. Mock dialogue being like Michael said, being able to go back and forth. And this is where you have an opportunity to not only try to stump an intern or stump a staff member, but also get to practice your pro-life skills um, with feedback from the other people in your small group so that it's not just a matter of, okay, I've, I've got all these theoretical skills, let's see if I can 
Sparta them out of my myself in some kind of an articulate way once this is over, but you get practice so that you actually have that muscle memory of mock conversations. You can see where a conversation may take a turn for the better, for the worse, depending on the different language that you're using. You get the concrete example of um, of what, what is gonna work and get the feedback from your peers on what they liked, what they didn't like, um, and how you can improve as an ambassador. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing is, uh, Cam mentioned the the speaker is like a wide range of really high trained pro life speakers. The facilitators, in, as part of this online series, are also very highly trained. They're all staff members with CCBR with plenty of experience, um, really high quality pro life activists. And so, it's rare to have the opportunity to ask your questions directly to someone else like that. And I think um, you'll really benefit from having a facilitator like that who can. Um, who's had that on the ground experience and um, who can speak from experience as to um, how to respond to just about any situation that might come up. Bingo. One of the perks as well, I believe Blaze put this in his blog article that he posted on Friday. Maybe somebody could throw in the comments um, that, that article from Blaze of so seven ways that you can get involved. Not only that, but obviously it, it's difficult to know exactly how long it's going to be before um, before we're able to go on and do activism. And so we are going to be able to provide an opportunity as a springboard from this program in particular, people who complete this program are going to be able to launch into um, kind of a, an open door mock dialogue session where you have a facilitator, it's not part of the series per se, but you can come in whether it's um, very briefly or for a long time and get some practice. Um, and whether that's over the span of the next several weeks or next several months, you'll be able to, um, Keep yourself sharp, even if you participate right now, and we're not able, and you're not able to join for one of our choice chain displays until a couple months down the road. You are not going to have to worry about getting rusty. You're going to be able to stay sharp um, with the community that you built um, in in the time following up. Mm -hmm. Another thing I can think of is that the title of the series is a Christian's Guide to Defending Life in the Womb, and uh, the reason for this is that it was built specifically for uh, churches. It's open to anyone and has content that can apply to any person, regardless of their religious views. Um, but it was intended, uh, built for Christian churches. And so uh, if you're a Christian and you want to learn a biblical basis for the pro-life position and uh, really get kind of get an idea of um, how to like talk with other Christians about it specifically, um, that's one other pro to this uh, series. Oh my goodness, Michael, you um, <laughs> you win. I, I can't think of anything sure? else beyond um, um, God. <laughs> so Michael's the champ, um, but you know what? I can be gracious in defeat. He is he is the champ. Um, if anyone's got any questions, you're welcome to throw them in the the comment bar. Um, our staff, our interns, will follow up with you. You can also anticipate. Um, you can also anticipate one of our community support interns messaging you sometime in the next week or two because we want to give you a personal invite to this series. I know that everyone's got reasons for what they've got on the go. We want you personally. This isn't just for the experienced pro-lifer, like Michael said. This isn't just for somebody who's already prepared to have conversations on the street. This is for anybody. And so regardless of how prepared you feel that you are, you need to be as prepared and as vigilant as possible because you never know when a conversation is going to come up. You never know if you can wait until choice chain to be able to um, rely on these skills. Maybe somebody in your family needs to hear the pro-life message. Maybe somebody at your workplace. I really want to encourage you for any one of those reasons or for all of those reasons that Michael and I shared back and forth to participate in this video series. And so check out the link that's uh, featured right now. Thank you, Michael, for um, humbling me in your victory. And I look forward to seeing more and more people register for the study series and the camaraderie, the relationships, the marriages, the lifelong best friends forever kind of um, friendships that come out of this at the end of the day. So thanks so much. Um, and I hope that you all are staying safe, staying healthy, and taking this time to prepare yourself as an effective pro-life ambassador. Thanks so much, and have a great afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.